It is a pleasure to have with us Dr. Sanjeev Agarwala. He is from St. Luke's Cancer Center in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and he's here to talk about a phase two study and the data just released here at ASCO 2014. Thank you, sir, for being with us. My pleasure. So let's give folks an overview. What is PV-10? So PV-10, um, also known as Rose Bengal, is a injectable um, drug that we are testing in melanoma. It's got a lot of history behind it. It was an agent that was in fact used as a dye. It's got, that's why it's got this uh, pink uh, color to it. And it was found that it has anti-cancer effects uh, when you inject tumors in animal models, the tumors shrink. Um, and what's also very interesting is that uh, it seems to set up an immune response because sometimes you have shrinkage of tumors that you're not injecting. So what we have done is we've uh, taken it forward in a phase two trial with melanoma and uh, we've treated 80 patients um, uh, on this trial. Uh, the idea being to inject uh, these patients' lesions with this disease, with this drug. And I do want to mention that uh, many of these patients were elderly, uh, so this is a very safe drug. And also many of these patients had received multiple lines of prior treatment for melanoma that hadn't worked. So we took a fairly refractory group of patients. And we injected uh, these tumors in these patients. And what we saw was that in about 50%, 51% to be precise, we saw um, tumors shrink in these patients. So more than half the patients, or about half the patients, had a response. Um, and in the patients who had a response, in half of those, uh, uninjected lesions also responded. We call them uh, the bystander lesions, and it's a bystander effect. And that, that really piqued our interest, because uh, with our colleagues at the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida, we're doing some studies now to understand the mechanism of action, and it does appear that this drug might have an immunological basis for its effects. How do you believe it works? So the way I think it works is, firstly, we know that by injecting the tumor, you have what we call a chemoablative effect, which means that there is necrosis, um, the, in the tumor, and the drug is taken up by the plasma of cancer cells. It's actually cancer cell selective. It doesn't get uptake by normal cells. And then by doing so and having this necrosis, we believe that there is an immunological effect that's set up. Uh, perhaps we're recruiting T cells into the tumor. Those T cells are then recognize the antigens and going elsewhere and then causing other tumors to shrink. That's our hypothesis and that's in, indeed what our colleagues at uh, the Moffitt Cancer Center in another poster that was presented at this meeting at ASCO have shown that there is some upregulation of T cells and so on, uh, which is really fascinating. So that's how we think it works, but there's more work to be done to determine that precisely. And just before we sat down, you finalized some future plans for this that I know you're pretty excited yes, about. Yes, I am. So, you know, now that we have good, mature phase two data, and as we all know, phase two trials are good because they give you information, but you have to prove it's better than what's available. So we are going to move forward with a randomized trial. Uh, because of all the excitement with the new melanoma drugs out there, um, we're going to take patients who have progressed on those drugs and have or have not responded to those drugs or who cannot receive them for whatever reason. And then we're gonna, um, if those patients need to have, of course, injectable disease, limited disease, and we are going to do a randomized phase three trial of injecting PB10 in uh, some patients, and in other patients, they'll be randomized to what would be the standard of care in that setting, chemotherapy. So uh, it'll be a two to one randomization, we think, uh, and the idea being to look and see if this drug can um, produce a prolonged uh, progression-free survival in those patients, and also a response and improve their survival as well. So we'll have several endpoints on this trial. So we're planning to move forward with that very quickly. Stay with older patients? Well, we're going to allow patients of all ages, but you know what's happened in the phase two study is because uh, you know a lot of younger patients will go for, quote, more aggressive therapy trials. Uh, we ended up with a, an older patient population, which is fine because we found it was very safe in them. But uh, obviously, for, uh, this will be open to all ages. And I think on the, on the randomized trial, we will get younger patients too. Very good, Doctor. Thanks for stopping by and sharing. Keeping us posted uh, on your progress with PV10. I will, and thank you for having me. Best of luck. Thank you.